good morning students so in the previous part we studied about the fertilization and then we also studied about the post fertilization changes there we studied about one of the post fertilization change uh, that is development of the endosperm now in this part we will be studying about one more change that takes place after fertilization and that is the development of embryo so we will be studying about embryogenesis in embryogenesis we will be first studying about the dicot embryo development so just pay attention at these diagrams over here now this is a diploid zygote which is formed by the fusion of the egg cell and then one male gamete the thing that we need to remember over here is this part the lower part of the zygote it will always remain the micropylar end whereas the upper part will always remain the chalazal end and the division that takes place into the zygote is mitotic division only so all the cells that will be formed are going to be diploid in nature now further what happens is this zygote it undergoes a transverse division and it forms two cells the apical cell as as well as the basal cell okay this apical cell the green cell that you can see this on further division it will give rise to the embryo first it will form the pro embryo then later on on further development it forms the embryo how does it form the embryo that we'll be studying later further the basal cell it undergoes many transverse division as you can see over here and it forms this long structure this long structure is called the suspensor and the basal cell of this suspensor towards the micropylar end is a larger cell it is larger than the other cells and this is called the hostorial cell now what is the function of this suspensor the role that the suspensor plays is pushing the embryo towards the endosperm now suppose in a normal embryo sac or in the ovule the endosperm is somewhere over here now what is an endosperm endosperm is a nutritive tissue and where is the nutrition used the nutrition of the endosperm is used for the development of this embryo so to take that nutrition to get that nutrition this embryo it has to go to the endosperm so what does the suspensor do the suspensor it pushes this embryo towards the endosperm so that it can take all the nourishment from there okay now on the other hand this apical cell this undergoes division and it forms a mass of cell as you can see here four cells are formed this is called the pro embryo which on later development it will form the embryo now let us see what happens further to this pro embryo the next change that takes place in the pro embryo is the pro embryo once more it undergoes division forming eight cells so first it was four cells and now again a division takes place where four more cells are formed so there are eight cells the suspensor on the other hand it looks as it is it is this transverse long structure but the uppermost cell of the suspensor that is towards the chalazal end this brown cell that you can see this is in contact with the pro embryo and this cell is called the hypophysis now let us see what further changes happen in the next change there is one more division happening in the pro embryo but this time the division that takes place is a periclinal division okay so because of this periclinal division, division there is this ring of cells that are formed and this ring of cells is called the dermatogen which will be the epidermis or you can say the outer layer of the embryo now later on this hypophysis even this divides and it forms eight cells so the four cells of this hypophysis which is towards the micropylar end will give rise to the root tip or the root cap and the other four cells which are towards the chalazal end or towards this pro embryo will give rise to the root cortex that we will be seeing it later i mean in the further slide now here you can see further development it takes place and there is a formation of this heart shape or torpedo shaped embryo on the top in this heart shape and torp torpedo uh, stage embryo the embryo has reorganized itself to form the apical meristem 
radical cotyledon and the hypocotyledon and here if you see this is a completely developed embryo where you can see the two cotyledons that is as it is a dicot seed so there are there will be two cotyledons you will see the radical that will later on give rise to the root and here the hypophysis cells that are divided to form the root tip or the root cap and the root cortex is over here so there is a radical there is this hypophysis cell that had that had divided the two cotyledons and you will see the apical meristem between the two cotyledons and you will also see as this embryo it develops the suspensor cell and the basal cell that is the hostorial cell it slowly just degenerates and slowly it will disappear so as it disappears we can say this embryo is completely developed now here i have put this these two pictures Th these are the microscopic view of the dicot seed where in this cell you can see that the integument you can see the ovule here this is the endosperm that is the nutritive tissue and here you can see a heart shaped embryo that is developing this is the suspensor and the hostoria okay so the function of the suspensor you can see over here this suspensor it it is pushing this heart shaped embryo towards the endosperm so that it can take all the nutrition from the endosperm and it can fully develop as you can see in this picture here the embryo has fully developed where you can see the apical meristem you can see the two cotyledons as it is dicot this is the radical which will give rise to the root the seed coat so th this is a complete developed dicot embryo okay now in the next part we will be studying about the monocot embryo so the monocot embryo development here after fertilization the first cell divides but the division over here is asymmetrical division that leads to the apical cell again and the basal cell this apical cell it divides rapidly which eventually it will form the embryo later on the pro embryo development in the monocots is very similar to the uh, dicots the only difference over here is the suspensor as uh, in the dicot uh, we had seen the suspensor it is form it forms this transverse long structure but over here in monocot it it won't form the transverse long structure it will just enlarge in shape okay and there is a group of cell in the pro embryo that divides rapidly and this cell this middle cell this mass of cell will give rise to most of the parts of the uh, developing embryo now here if you see this is the scutellum what is a scutellum in monocots what happens is the monocots they reduce the pair of cotyledons to a single modified cotyledon now in dicot we had seen two cotyledons monocots on contrary what monocot does it it reduces the pair of cotyledons into a single modified cotyledon and this single modified cotyledon is called the scutellum so this is nothing but the cotyledon okay which is modified into a single cotyledon you can also see the this now this developing axis that we had seen over here as i had told you all that this will give rise to most of the parts of this uh, embryo this developing axis this will give rise to the plumule and the radical so as you can see over here in this picture the plumule is forming the radical is forming there is the scutellum and there is one more uh, formation one more structural formation that takes place over here is the formation of coleoriza and the coleoptile what is a coleoriza and the coleoptile coleoriza is a protective thin sheath above the radical it is a protective sheet which grows above the radical and coleoptile is a sheet that grows above the plumule okay so in the in this slide you can see in this picture this is a mature corn seed that is a monocot seed again this is a microscopic uh, view or the microscopic picture where you can see the endosperm you can see the pericarp this is the scutellum that is the cotyledon you can see the radical over here and the coleoriza this white covering that is covering the radical the coleoptile you can see over here and this is the shoot meristem which gives rise to the shoot 
okay so the shoot the radical that will give rise to the root the coleoriza covering the radical and coleoptile covering the plumule or the shoot meristem so this was all about the development of embryo in monocot and dicots now let, let us move to the next part of this chapter that is seed and fruit development so as we know the basic difference between the dicot and the monocot uh, seed is dicot is two cotyledonous seed and monocot is a single cotyledon okay here the ovule will uh, forms the seed and some seed they have two seed coats Do, those seed coats are formed by the integuments that we had seen in the structure of the ovule the outer coat is called the testa and the inner there is one more thin membranous coat inside which is called the tegment now after the development of the embryo in some seed what happens is the endosperm it still remains okay like after the whole end embryo has been developed there is still some remnant of the endosperm in the seed such seeds are called endospermic or albuminous seed the example for these seeds are the castor seeds or the coconut now coconut and castor are endospermic seed where after the development of the embryo the endosperm still remains a little on the other hand there are some seeds where after the development of the embryo the endosperm is completely used up where is this endosperm used this endosperm is used for the development of this embryo such seeds are called non endospermic or ex albuminous seed the examples for the non endospermic seeds are all the pulses so the example can be pea beans and all the pulses we can take for non endospermic seeds now what what about the fruits the fruit development is triggered by the release of hormones by the developing seed so after fertilization when the zygote is formed the ovary is differentiated into the fruit and there is a ovary wall develop which is called the pericarp now what is pericarp pericarp is basically a fleshy uh, part of the fruit that is edible that we eat for example you can take the mango the fleshy part the edible fleshy part of the mango is the peri uh, pericarp or you can take uh, coconut as well in that case you can take the example of coconut as well so what are the significance of the seed and fruit development the first significance you can take is as the fruit it provides nourishment to the developing seed then the fruit it also protects the seed in immature condition so the seed when it is in immature condition the outer fruit it will cover up and it will just protect the immature seed the seed it also it serves as one of the most important propagating organ and the fruit and the seed uh, they are special devices you can say for uh, dispersal which helps them to be dispersed and distributed to different areas like different species can be distributed to different areas through seed and the fruits okay so this was all about the seed and the fruit let us next go to the next part of this chapter that is epomixis what is epomixis epomixis it actually means asexual reproduction plants but by a specific means it is also called as agamospermy so when we talk about asexual reproduction we have to talk about two types of asexual reproduction in plants one is the asexual reproduction by uh, epomixis or agamospermy and the other one is the asexual reproduction by vegetative propagation now the asexual reproduction by vegetative propagation we had already studied in the asexual part that we studied at the start of this chapter now what is exactly agamospermy or epomixis let us study this now it is a formation of the embryo by unfertilized ovule so there is no fertilization of the ovule but there is still the formation of embryo happening now this is uh, epomixis it is divided under three categories let us study all of it the first one is adventive po polyembryony here the embryo that is developed it is developed from a diploid cell of the nucellus or the integument okay and here the mass of the nucellus and the integument they have many cells 
and all these cells are diploid cells so one of its diploid cell it becomes the megaspore mother cell which gives rise to the embryo now this adventive poly embryony this is very common in citrus fruit that we'll be studying in one of the slide further the second type of epomixis is the recurrent epomixis or you can also say recurrent a gamosperm in this case the embryo that is developed is formed by the diploid megaspore mother cell or they can also be formed by some of the cells of the nucleus uh, nucellus again and the embryo that is formed in this uh, recurrent uh, epomixis is again diploid in nature the third one is non recurrent agamospermy or non recurrent epomixis now here what happens is the embryo develop from a haploid unfertilized egg so egg that is formed is normal the microspore mother cell it undergoes all the normal processes to form a complete embryo sac but fertilization does not take place the only difference is the fertilization not taking place this is also called parthenogenesis this uh, function of ma ma megaspore mother cell forming everything properly everything normally but no fertilization taking place is also called parthenogenesis so this is a non recurrent epomixis so there were three types of epomixis three types of asexual reproduction by epomixis adventive polyembryony recurrent poly, uh, epomixis and non recurrent epomixis now further let us just move to the last part of this chapter that is we will be studying about parthenocarpy and parthenon uh, sorry polyembryony parthenocarpy what is parthenocarpy parthenocarpy is a formation of the fruit without seeds you can say so uh, parthenocarpy is seen mainly in the fruits like pineapple you can see it in banana and some of the papaya fruits also do not have uh, uh, seeds so even these are parthenocarpic fruits so uh, the parthenocarpy this term was coined by nol in 1902 what it means is here the fruits are developed without the process of fertilization because there is no fertilization you will not find any seed into these fruits now how are these how are these fruits produced the placental tissue what is the placental tissue the placental tissue is the tissue that holds up the ovule into the ovary the placental tissue in the unfertilized ovary it produces auxin oxygen is an hormone this oxygen is responsible for the enlargement of the ovary into the fruit so there is no fertilization happening there is no seed formation happening but there is enlargement of the fruit happening which is because of the oxygen which is released by the placental tissue these fruits are produced normally but they are without any seeds the example i have already told you all pineapple papaya and banana okay so this is parthenocarpy that is fruits without seed and the last part is polyembryony now polyembryony this development it was first uh, noticed by leuwenhoek in 1719 he had observed this or noticed this into citrus genus I, as i had told you all about adventive polyembryony which is very common in citrus fruit that we will be studying here so here what happens the development of more than one embryo inside the seed as you can see this is the citrus seed and inside there is development of more than one embryo that is happening the polyembryony again it can be of two types one is adventive polyembryony here the embryo that is developed is directly from the diploid cell of the nucellus or the integument okay so this embryo that is developed it is from the nucellus or it is from the integument the example is citrus uh, if you see any citrus fruit if you just break open the seed you will find many uh, what do you say many embryos inside the second type of polyembryony is the cleavage polyembryony where the zygote polyembryo sometimes cleaves into many parts or units so the zygote that is developed by the fusion of the 
XL and the male gamete. It just cleaves or it just divides into many parts or many units and that gives rise to many uh, embryos. So uh, yeah, these were the two types of polyembryony. Now this polyembryony, this is very important as it increases the chances of the survival of the new plant as one seed, it has many embryos. So the chances of the survival of the new plant, it increases. Okay. So students, this was all about all the topics uh, covered up in this chapter that is reproduction in lower and higher plants. We have studied about asexual reproduction. We have studied about sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, uh, we have studied the asexual reproduction in lower plants, whereas we have studied the vegetative propagation that is again a part of asexual reproduction. Then we came to sexual reproduction where we studied about the male and the female uh, reproductive organ of angiosperm that is the flowering plants. We studied how they are pollinated and we studied the complete fertilization process. Then uh, we also studied about the post fertilization changes that takes place. So this was all about this chapter. Thank you.